Hey friends, it's Dimitri with Rubashka Streetwear. Today I'm gonna to be talking about maximizing the ROI of a design. This is a topic that I just randomly thought of, it popped into my head, and I'm like, hey, I need to make a video. Plus, I just shaved this morning so I don't look like a bum. <laughs> so ROI, if you don't know what that means, that just means return on investment because you are spending time plus money to get a design no matter who you are. If you are a designer yourself, you're gonna be spending significant amounts of time usually to make a really cool design. And on the back end, you are still spending some money, whether that is you know, for supplies or for you know, buying stuff that you need to make a collage or you know, paying for Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and all that stuff, so you're spending some money. If you're not a designer, um, your money aspect is definitely going to be more because you're probably going to be spending you know maybe you got a design from a friend or something so you're spending 50 to 100 bucks but uh, typically you're going to be spending even more than that a lot of times especially if it's for commercial purposes which means that you own the rights to the artwork and that you are distributing that artwork and you know printing it and selling it over and over and over again so your cost can definitely go up um, but if you get exclusive rights to the artwork and you can remix it and everything, there's a l several ways that you can get a huge return on your investment and I'll explain those. And there's three things that I thought of for this. There are colors, there's the format of the design, and then there is the design elements. And I will explain what all of this means. I think you guys will like this video. So the first thing, and I have on the table over here, I have examples of clothing I made and designs, and you guys will get a really good picture of what I mean. So the colors, what that basically means is that when you release stuff, you let's say that you're releasing 100 units of a design. Well, if you paid um, a lot of money for a design and you're only limiting it to this amount of clothing because a lot of times streetwear, we are creating the brand on a limited basis. So the designs release are limited because you wanna attract the customers to buy that and you wanna run through inventory. You don't really want your store to be, you know, you're just pumping out the same stuff over and over again. Sometimes sometimes that works, but if you're a smaller brand, it's, it's better to try to stay more limited if possible, um, depending on the size of your cust uh, customer base. So by colors, what I mean is the ink color or the color of clothing. So here's a good example of this. So I made this design a long time ago and this is printed on a hoodie and it's in red ink. But let's just say, for example, I made 500 of this design in this color. But then I wanted to make, I wanted to reintroduce it. So what I did was I printed it in yellow because it looks really cool in this yellow color as well. So what that means is that this design in a way is limited because I only made a certain amount of this color. But if I wanted to reintroduce the product again and to maximize my return on the amount of time I put into the, put into the design, I would re revamp it in yellow and now it's a new product and people can now uh, get a hold of this if they weren't able to get a hold of that colorway. This is like a really good method to, this is the first easiest method to get a, a bigger ROI on the time and money that you're putting into the design. The second way of doing this is by format. And basically what that means is that it depends, it, it means that you are using different materials or a different type of canvas for your artwork. So the material, and essentially clothing is a, is a canvas, it's an art canvas. That's what I like to call it because you are putting some sort of artwork on a canvas, a piece of clothing, right? There's other types of formats that you can do. You can do embroidery. So for example, a good example of embroidery is, so this is a design I made a really long time ago. I've worn this hoodie a lot, it has like stains and stuff on it. 
it just says apocalypse in some cool font and it's just screen printed but I made this and there was kind of a limited amount made of them and I didn't have this in stock for a few years then I got some people asking me hey can you bring this back but I'm like I don't really want to bring it back but enough people bugged me so I did bring it back and I brought I changed a lot of things actually the first thing I did was I changed the color so it's not white anymore it's it's this cool gray thread um, I changed the the format and that's the embroidery I used embroidery instead of screen printing and there's actually one other change in this design but that goes into this category design elements the actual design is somewhat changed this looks more rustic and more apocalyptic because some pieces of the letters are missing like you can see the a the p all the letters it looks really rough and worn out so that was something i did to bring back uh existing design so basically i didn't have to do much work to change the design all i did was just uh you know use the eraser tool on uh illustrator and i changed it up a bit but even i didn't have to do that i could have just had this embroidered so essentially i'm not taking time to make a new design and go through all that process and i'm bringing back a product that people wanted but in a new and fresh way so that way i'm like again again maximizing the roi of this design and this is a perfect example of the format i will show you another example of format so here is a really popular t-shirt it's a register for world war three this is something i made years ago and people love this t-shirt it's one of the best sellers now I was thinking, hey, I don't just want to make a t-shirt if I want to bring it back. So I made a crew neck version of it and a hoodie version of it. And I released these during different time periods in the year. So that's another example of the material is like you can use something like a hoodie, uh, a crew neck. Another example of this is stickers. This is another uh, different format of this. Okay, so that is that. And the third thing that we're going to be talking about today is design, design elements. So this is basically using bits and pieces of a design. And I'll go back to my World War III example. So with the t-shirt, you have this gigantic design on here. But when I made a sticker version of it, I only used the phone number and the words because for a sticker, it doesn't really, in my head as a designer, it doesn't really look as cool. Um, like for instance, if this was on the back of your phone, it's kind of interesting and obscure and people would be like, oh, what's this? This is kind of cool. It looks like some advertisement. And I thought that it'd be better to use just the numbers in that for the sticker rather than this whole image. And actually the oh, design element is on the front as well, which is basically the same as the sticker. A really good example of this is, so here's a really popular crew neck I made. It was a, it's called surveillance state. Um, and there's this cool emblem on the front, but I had an idea or I had an idea for a sticker. I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna take this emblem and make it into a sticker because it's a standalone piece. So that's kind of like one thing. Stand alone elements. In order for this to work, you have to have bits and pieces of your design that could stand alone by itself. So for instance, the reason why this one works a lot is because it says Rubashka Streetwear, the name of my brand and it has a little always watching, always listening, a little phrase or motto, and it has a cool image. And this works as a cool sticker. I didn't think it'd be as cool to make, to have all of the text and whatnot um, as a sticker. And I also had an idea recently, uh, this is a USA hat I made a while back, but I was thinking that this is would be cool enough to make a patch or something, and it could be, you know, on a hat like that. So I haven't made one before, but this is definitely something you could do. You can take a design element and transfer it over onto a totally different piece of clothing. So that way you're continuing to maximize the ROI of a design. So those are the three ways that you can do that for your designs. 
And the entire point of this is that you're trying to basically make things more limited in your brand, but also you're still expanding the design. You're still releasing it, but in different formats and different ways. And it kind of makes your brand look less like a Redbubble store, if you know what I mean. Um, I'll, ex I'll explain this again. So let's say that I took this entire design, the surveillance state, and it says stay right here. And I just printed this entire image on a sticker. And then I printed all this on a hat. And then I printed all this on a t-shirt. And then I printed all this on a crew neck. And it's all on my web store like that. It kind of makes the design look uh, not thought out and it kind of cheapens it. It makes it look like a Redbubble store. Those are all really those bad cheesy websites that people throw up designs and they're trying to make a brand, but it doesn't really look like a brand. Now, contrast that to this where you take an element from it and you put on a hat it kind of makes it look better and i can release something like this into the future rather than pumping out all the same stuff over and over again and it just helps it just helps your brand's image and it also helps you out on the back end because you're not always constantly having to think of new designs that's a problem a problem some brand owners run into um, I try to release one design, uh, one new design a month, but during the month I'm also doing a limited restock and I'm also bringing back old items but in new formats. So that's what all these examples are on, on the table here. There's stuff that I brought back and I'm not ma making the other old stuff necessarily. So anyways, those are three ways to maximize the ROI of design. Hope you guys like this video and uh, leave me any comments down below if you have any questions. Thanks.